Good morning. Please stand with me to give thanks. Your priests, O Lord, shall be clothed with justice. Your holy ones shall ring out their joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters in Christ, on this memorial day of St. John Marie Vianney, let us begin this Holy Mass, acknowledging our sins, and seeking the Lord's mercy and forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, who made the priest St. John Vianney wonderful in his pastoral zeal, Grant, we pray, that through his intercession and example, we may in charity win brothers and sisters for Christ and attain with them eternal glory through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The following message came to Jeremiah from the Lord. For thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, write all the words I have spoken to you in a book. For thus says the Lord, incurable is your wound, grievous your bruise. There is none to plead your cause, no remedy for running sore, no healing for you. All your lovers have forgotten you. They do not seek you. I struck you as an enemy would strike, punished you cruelly. Why cry out over your wound? Your pain is without relief. Because of your great guilt, your numerous sins, I have done this to you. Thus says the Lord, see, I will restore the tents of Jacob. His dwellings I will pity. City shall be rebuilt upon hill, and palace restored as it was. For them will resound songs of praise, the laughter of happy men. I will make them not few, but many. They will not be tiny, for I will glorify them. His sons shall be as a bull, his assembly before me shall stand firm. I will punish all his oppressors. His leader shall be one of his own, and his ruler shall come from his kin. When I summon him, he shall approach me. How else should one take the deadly risk of approaching me, says the Lord. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. The Lord will build up Zion again and appear in all his glory. The nations shall revere your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has been has rebuilt Zion and appeared, appeared in his glory, when he has regarded the prayer of the destitute and not despised their prayer. Let this be written for the generation to come, and let this fu his future creatures praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his holy height, from heaven he beheld the earth. 
to hear the groaning of the prisoners, to release those doomed to die. The Lord will give us time and hear the song of The children of your servants shall abide, and their posterity shall continue in your presence, that the name of the Lord may be declared on Zion and his praise in Jerusalem, when the peoples gather together in the kingdoms to serve the Lord. The Lord will build up time and death and the earth and all the Lord. The Lord be with you. Some Pharisees and scribes came to Jesus from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They do not wash their hands when they eat a meal. He summoned the crowd and said to them, Hear and understand. It is not what enters one's mouth that defiles the man, but what comes out of the mouth is what defiles him. Then his disciples approached and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? He said in reply, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. If a blind man leads a blind man, both will fall into a pit. The Gospel of the Lord. In another passage, Jesus says, Whoever is not with me is against me. And this uh, story today sort of recounts the same truth, that everything that is not from the Heavenly Father must be uprooted so that the garden of God's kingdom may be full of his plans. And so, in our own hearts, it is maybe a difficult time or a difficult thing to endure, but we must allow the Lord to do weeding in the garden of our own hearts and our own lives. We must show him uh, and give him freedom, but show him also where we need him so that he can uproot those things that are not of God, that are not from him. So that we can, not like those, the parable of the seed, where in the third uh, different scenario, the seed that falls and it is choked by the weeds around it. And because it is choked by those weeds around it, it cannot bear fruit. So too, our own lives will be less fruitful if we still have these weeds growing, if we don't let the Lord rip these out. So let's, with humility, with courage, with confidence in how much God loves us, allow him to do this work in our hearts so that we can then be fruitful leaders of others, that we can guide others to Jesus, not as blind guides, but as true, sure guides to bring them to their own Savior. For the institutions of marriage and family, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, the fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you will be come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, thank God. Blessed is the servant whom the Lord finds watching when he comes. Amen, I say to you, he will put that servant in charge of all his property.
Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of Blessed John Vianney, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.